and the start of this episode didn't start off too well when we were met with this. Then a park ranger came by to go down the road and he said other people are walking on the trail and he wouldn't stop us. So off we go. This is an epic trip for Cache Canada. There's a good handful of geocaches along the way to our target cache, which is an earth cache, by the way. That's what we're after. But we've decided to just target the earth cache first. Go all the way there. It's about seven and a half kilometers as the crow flies. So we just want to get to it, make sure we get our target cache. And then as we see our progress, see how we're feeling, as the heat builds up in the day, we'll tackle the geocaches uh, as we come back. So first, the target cache. The Williams Lake River Valley was laid down by glacial activity and all of this material was glacial deposit. Once the glacier started to retreat to the south, this whole area was covered with a great big lake. As the Williams River cut through the area, these areas were exposed and seashells can even be seen at altitude, being witness to the fact that the area was a lake and all of this material is in layers from when it was deposited by the glacier. That can be seen throughout the hike. As you go along, there's areas that have just come out and this showing that Williams River Valley is an active area. It's not stagnant, it's moving, it's ever-changing. No trespassing, are you kidding? There's no way I'd go in there. The stench is unbelievable. This is a, a sewage treatment area and it's all bubbling up and it's red and it's gross. I don't know who in their right mind would want to go in there. <laughs> Certainly not us. We're welcoming a shady lane coming up and the sun has gone behind the clouds a bit so we're getting a little bit of cloud cover it's cutting down the heat because the heat of the day is rising now last week we took you to a spectacular waterfall fourth highest in canada uh, but with a very low rating for an earth cache a one and a half one and a half rating alone not very spectacular but the site was amazing
This earth cache is probably the opposite. The rating is spectacular because there are only two of them in all of Canada. But what we're going to what we're going to see at ground zero might for most of you be less than spectacular except for us it's going to be something very very special stay with us i decided to break it up a little bit with a cache find there uh, is one should be right beside the path as we're going by so we're just going to see if we can find that one it's a one and a half one and a half although our track record is not very good for that rating. Oh, wait a minute. It's, so it's a one and a half three. So it should be pretty good. And uh, the hint says, at the base of a small fir tree covered with branches. Hmm, I wonder if we can find it. There we are. Boom. We found a cache and it's a big ammo can. Woohoo! And boy, <laughs> whew, he thought the sewage treatment smelled bad. Holy doodle. <laughs> Whoa. Huh, it's not in bad shape. It's a little. A little musty, a little damp. This cache has been visited by Navy Avi Navy Aviator. Say that three times fast. Navy Aviator, Navy Aviator, Navy Aviator, Navy 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 Navy. Ooh, it's starting to tear. There we go. We got her logged in. And there's some bunch of swag in here. There's a there's a Donald Duck, elephant, crab, some kind of transforming egg thing, Transaurus Rex. Oh, and uh, strawberry cheese, strawberry shortcake, girl. There we go. Cash found. Love it. So why all the fuss for this one earth cache? You'll see that soon. But uh, to bring you up to speed, if you've been following Cache Canada, you are already may be familiar with this. If you're new to our channel, let's let you know what we're doing. About four years ago, I put out a challenge cache for finding a third or a quarter of a fizzy grid based just solely on earth caches. And this was my progress at the time. I was able to just complete that challenge. But then I thought, well, how much more could you get? How much further could you go to complete a challenge like that? Could you get a half a grid, three quarters of the grid? And then is it possible to fill a complete fizzy grid based solely on earth caches alone and then i figured i'm just going to go for it i started targeting earth caches with ratings that we had not had yet and pretty soon we surpassed half a grid and three quarters of a grid and we started getting ourselves closer 
to filling a complete fizzy grid. Lost sight of Karen. She started uh, filming a bed of the creek and I was just walking on and then I just turned around and can't see her so I'm just gonna wait here in the shade for her to catch up and if she doesn't come shortly I'm gonna go back and make sure she's all right because we are in bear country haven't seen one yet although we did see one last night on the side of the road a black bear running along the road but not on the trail yet yet and we hope to keep it that way although it'd be nice to see a bear I don't want a close encounter oh I see her coming We're about 300 meters away as the crow flies. We've got a big loop to go around and come back and then one more bridge. And it's that bridge that we need to know the title of. So as we've been walking along, we've seen the bridges are numbered. So the CO wants to know what the number of the bridge is that's closest to the ground zero for the earth cache. So I have to remember to keep our eyes open for that one. But we're getting close. Well, we made it. Uh, we just took our picture uh, from ground zero with this amazing feature in the background. It is uh, more than, well, it is, it is more than I expected. It's not a wow, like, it is still a wow, but I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it's not a waterfall, like, holy cow, the one from last week. This is, uh, wow, let's take a look. It's, it's, it's like, amazing. So what is the big deal about this earth cache? For us, it's one more square filled towards a fizzy grid, completely filled with earth caches. Because this earth cache is a four and a half three, and there are only two four and a half three earth caches in all of Canada. We only have four more of our fizzy earth cache grid to get, so that's kind of exciting. And just waiting to get out of the country so we can finish that. There's something like 52 in the world. There's one closer to home near Sarasota Springs, New York, but as of right now with COVID, we can't get to it. So this is the last square we're able to fill while remaining in Canada. So now this fills the fifth last square and now we only need four squares more to fill a complete fizzy grid of just earth caches. So that means we're gonna to have to wait until the border opens and we're able to go either into the United States or into Europe to finish this grid. So that is why we've come all this way, seven and a half kilometer hike up this trail. And thank goodness it was a, it was a road. Uh, it wasn't a, a very arduous trail. It was just very hot and long. But it was flat, easy to get to. Uh, we haven't encountered any bears, any wildlife. And uh, it's been just really cool footage of the terrain nearby as we're walking along. It's been a very nice walk. And we're glad that uh, you've joined us and uh, come along to check that out. That view is spectacular. I, I thought there would be a bit more scenic stuff on this route. But it's been a very nice and quiet walk. It's been very easy. It's roadway all the way and there's been birds tweeting and the sound of water rushing and a few mechanical things in the distance but 
it's been very different kind of experience. It is amazing the the sculpting that the the as gravity has pulled the land down and created that huge massive slide right there that was really cool and just above us uh, we have a train uh, going along the side of the the hill just up here and it's just going along and that looks like wow I don't know if I'd want to be on that train if it ever gave way the hill just kind of slid down because it could happen <laughs> ooh scary I had no idea that there was so much sandy soil here. Um, it's really been interesting to see the parts that are carved out and the parts that are covered over with grasses and trees. So we're finished up here at the Earth Cache. We've got the answers that we need. And we've only got about a kilometer and a half to get to the Fraser River. So we've come this far. It would be a shame not to go that extra distance to check it out. Let's go see. We made it. The mighty Fraser River. This river is huge. We made it. Oh, it's been quite a hike. It's pretty hot. It's warming up a lot. It was nice to get that earth cache that's yeah. been on my list for a long time to get that for us for our physical. Yeah. Group. And but to uh, walk all the way down here and see the Fraser River too. We saw a, a bald eagle on the way out here. Just, just around the corner. And the Geo Woodstock is going to be... Just a little sorry. ways down outside of Abbotsford is going to be the Geo Woodstock. Yep, next year, 2022. Finally, so. keep watching. There's more caches to be found. Yep, we'll leave you here. Thanks for coming along. Where will geocaching take, take you? The Fraser River! Maybe. Before closing out this video, I wanted to relate the fact that we knew what we were getting into. We knew it was a long hike and we had prepared for it, but apparently we hadn't prepared enough. I took two small bottles of Gatorade and had two bottles of water. Karen had uh, four bottles of water with her and we found it was not enough. The eight kilometers to the earth cache was very pleasant. Uh, we did our, our geocaching and our sightseeing and of course our filming as well. So it took a little bit longer than what normally would have taken to walk that distance. Once we were at the earth cache, we decided we wanted to take that little extra distance to go see the Fraser River. And we knew once we got there, it would be the full 10 kilometers back to get back to the car. On the way to the Earth Cache, the temperature was about 24 to 26 degrees and held pretty steady. There was some shade and the pathway was uh, smooth gravel the entire way with the occasional up and down small, tiny little hill. On the way back, we discovered that we had pretty much exhausted our supply of water. We only had about one and a quarter bottles left for the trip back to the car. It was after the earth cache that we started to ration that last bottle of water, taking one sip each every four or five hundred meters. We started to feel exhausted not long after. The temperature had suddenly jumped up to 32 degrees Celsius and not having enough water with us started to take its toll. We soon realized that we were starting to succumb from heat exhaustion, especially London Westie. It was a real struggle to get back to the vehicle. We put away all our camera equipment at the Fraser River as we knew we needed all our energy to get back to the vehicle. 
it's always cool to get someplace, but then when you have to backtrack, it's not so much fun. And this trek back to the vehicle after was not fun at all. And I urge you to make sure that you have enough water and food with you on a trek. We knew that going in. We thought, oh, four bottles should be just sufficient, but it wasn't. Had we had at least two more bottles of water, we probably would have been okay. Turns out we survived. Once we got back to the vehicle, the AC was on and we were basking in the cool air to try to cool down as quickly as possible. I drank too much water too quickly and then got sick, unfortunately, but I started to feel better. We just want to urge caution and make sure that you know the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke as it would develop from there. So stay safe out there on the trail. Thanks for coming along with us on this adventure. And we're so glad we can come along with you on so many more and that we're still alive and healthy. Thanks. Mm -hmm.